Hey, it's Steve here from Chilcote Forestry, and uh, I'm out marking on a Sunday. It's going to start snowing again later, so I figured I'd get some marking in. Uh, just wanted to point out something. This whole area here has been high graded. And as you look around, you can see there's zero timber value except for a couple of walnuts that got left here for some reason. And what I want to point out is this stilt grass that's in here. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of times loggers will bring this stuff in, uh, the seed sticks to their equipment. As soon as they come in and log, it's planted, and then it, three years later, it takes over the whole area. So you get no regeneration at all. So this project is going to involve a uh, seed tree harvest. We'll get everything out of here, open it up to the sunlight south is that way. So this is all sunny. I think we can put a food plot in here if it's not too wet. It's frozen now and I think it gets a lot of moisture and that's still, still grass really likes that. So that's why it's here. So that could be a good thing or it could be too wet. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. But the first thing we got to do is get rid of this still grass. And I think I can get this guy funding to do that through the NRCS. So we're going to get a, <clears throat> a project going here and spray this whole area, get rid of the stilt grass. It'll probably take about three years of spraying. Once that's done, things will start to grow. We may be able to put a food plot in. Um, we may put a new road in and a, he's gonna build a house up on top of the ridge there. So it's possible that <clears throat> we can get a perk test down in here and, and put his sand mound there and plant that. So we'll have to see what develops this spring. I'll keep you posted. Um, any comments or questions, uh, just leave them down below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and share. And I'll talk to you next time. Okay, so what we're doing today is spraying oust with a mist blower on still grass. I'm about to open up this stand here. And if we cut this and let a lot of sunshine in, still grass will take over the whole property. So. I'm gonna try to hit this with a pre-emergent to keep it from germinating at all. And then if some does germinate, we will uh, come back and retreat. But this will keep it from taking over the whole place. Um, I don't know if you can see, like everything that looks like hay down here, it is uh, still grass from last year. It's an annual, so. Um, need this done. Pretty much just, ah, it was back in my face there. Pretty much just go down through the woods, paint the ground with it, and it prevents germination. <clears throat> Here's some, uh, Stripe maple, which can be a real problem as well. Uh, and we'll be zipping that off and I'll treat the stumps with a different chemical. I'll use Garlon 4 on that. Uh, that will also take over the whole place because it's a prolific cedar and it throws a lot of shade, keeping the oaks and cherries from coming up. Thus ends the lesson for today.
it's a pretty good kill all the way down through there. <clears throat> now on these ferns, it takes a little longer, especially when they're in the shade. The more sunlight you have on your plant, the faster it's going to die. You can see I hose down this striped maple, it's going to die too. It's already yellowing. You might not be able to see it on your screen, but that fern is yellow. And then further back in the woods, there's still a little green on that stilt grass. But out here in the sunlight, it's toasted. Even that green patch there, it looks green now, but it's going to die. So it only took me, I think I sprayed four tankfuls. So you're looking at you know, just a few hours going down this road and and then going back through the woods a little bit to get back in there and get it all taken care of. Now if I were to log this without treating that stilt grass, it was all out through there and there's fern patches that I got too. This whole place would be a field of stilt grass and nothing would grow. So if you've got it on your property and you're thinking about logging, you need to call me, talk to me about it, figure out what to do, okay? You know, I could give you some advice, I could do it for you, whichever, just uh, for God's sakes don't open up your woods and let that stuff go crazy in there. Hey guys, uh, I'm frost seeding today and everybody knows about frost seeding so I don't have to really go into that much, but... I wanted to mention a couple of things about food plots. Ooh, I'm a little worn out from the, the hike up and down. So I'm taking a little break. <clears throat> a couple of tips that I'll give you is one is to go on down to the hardware store and get you some of these buckets with the sealable lids. They have a little rubber grommet in there and you can store the seeds, your leftover seeds in the basement or in a cool dry place keeps uh, mice out of them and keeps the uh, moisture out of them as well um, I'm working with local seed company on some blends and we're going to experiment with some things we'll have some things out in the demo plot if you get yourself out to uh, Ag Progress Days I'll show you what we have planted out there um, this uh, particular mix is four different kinds of clover they all have their own uh, benefits and uh, slightly different uh, growth habit and there's a good chicory in there um, there's red clover for when this gets really dry uh, late in the season if you get droughty conditions it's good to have some red clover in there because it has a deeper root system it can withstand more drought than white clovers um, Let's see, another tip I wanted to mention was it's a good idea to weigh your seed. I don't really bring a scale because I've been doing this for so long. I kind of have a feel for it. And I also keep my my fingers out in the seed flow so I can, I can sort of feel how much seed is coming out. And then it's also a very good idea to go very light and go one way and then go perpendicular. Um, that way you get a little bit more even spread. I'm not doing that today because I messed up my knee. and uh, So the less walking the better. And I got to mark timber later. But the other thing I wanted to mention is the timber has been thinned in here. Food plots are only a supplement to good forest management. When you manage your forest for regeneration and forest um, growth below three and a half feet and you constantly have uh, stump sprouts and you have uh, forbs growing uh, on the forest floor there's plenty to eat for the deer to eat out in the woods if you have hundreds of acres of this thinned forest you don't need any food plots and you'll have plenty of forage for deer but in most cases you don't have that uh, when you have closed canopy forest and you have things like what we had here a lot of us birch and stripe maple in the mid-story 
there was nothing getting down to the forest floor. We also had a lot of invasives here. So I, I took care of the invasives and we thinned everything down. When we logged it, we paid the logger to uh, mow off all the striped maple and birch. Now it'll probably come back with a lot of birch, but we can do some tending later and uh, get that reduced. And deer will eat uh, birch sprouts if they're hungry enough, they will eat it. Um, there's a lot of red maple, so there'll be a lot of red maple, stump sprouts, black gum. Uh, those are all really preferred sprout species. And of course oak. Hopefully we'll get oak to regenerate and come back because that's your money tree. Uh, we cut it down to about 50 basal area. And that's what it takes to get new oaks to get started. And cherry. There's cherry in here too. So uh, I think that's about it for tips. Um, get in touch with me if you want to do some forest management and turn your property into a deer magnet and something that will really attract, hold, and grow good deer and timber. All right. See you next time. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button and click on the bell so you'll be notified when there's a new video. And comment down below and let me know if there's anything you'd like to know more about.